Hey Bonavista Baptist kids, welcome back. It's November 1st and we're starting a new series. This week, we're gonna be focusing on the things we can be grateful for. What's being grateful? How about instead of telling you, I let you figure out after watching a story. Hey look, our order's finally ready. Man, I hope I get the toad. Dude, if I get Bowser, this will be amazing. Oh. What is this? This is interesting. This isn't Bowser, that's what it is. I don't want this, who would? I mean, it's a toy still. You should at least be grateful that you got a toy. The wrong toy. The toy I wanted was not this. I don't know anyone who would want this, so I'll just send it back. I think you need to learn a little gratitude. Because some people don't get toys like this, and the fact that you still got one, it's still a toy, you can still use it. What I think is that I need Bowser. So can you guess which one of us was grateful for what we got? If you guessed Kira, you are 100% correct. Having gratitude is being thankful. Now sometimes it may seem like there's nothing to be thankful for. In our story today, Instead of focusing on what I did have, I focused on what I didn't. I pay more attention to the fact that I didn't get the toy I wanted and less on the fact that I still got a toy. In our lesson today, we're going to see someone who does just that, forgets to focus on the things she does have and instead focuses on what she doesn't. Feeling down, you pick me up. Oh, oh, and when my heart is feeling empty out, you fill my cup. I just wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I wanna say thank you for the way you love me. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me Sing. Oh, oh, oh. And even in the deepest, darkest night, you help me see Sing it out now. Oh, oh, oh. I just wanna say thank you for the way you love me I wanna say thank you for the way you love me
Where does gratitude start? With your words? Oh, uh, hold on one second. Hello? Oh, thanks. In your head? What about your heart? Being thankful includes all of those things, your heart, your head, and your words. But I think gratitude truly begins with your eyes. It starts with paying attention, stopping to see the people around you and all the other beautiful things in your life, like the way your dad buttered and cut your toes just the way you like it. That crossing guard standing in the pouring rain to make it safe for you to get to school. The way your kid brother can turn even cleaning your room into a party. Your fingerprints that God designed for you and no one else in the whole world. That amazing, breathtaking sunset on the way home from dance class. When you truly see these things, it changes your heart. The words bubble up in your mind and you can't help but say thank you. The more you remember to thank God and the people around you, the more others can see God at work in you. And that's why gratitude is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 18. Ilsa sighed as she trailed along behind her mom at the grocery store. Can I just go wait in the car? Mom handed Ilsa a tiny loaf of bread to put into the cart. You need to learn for yourself what you can eat. Nothing. I can't eat anything. Earlier that day, Ilsa had gotten the food sensitivity test results back from the allergist. No gluten, no dairy, no artificial colors or flavors. I don't even know what gluten is. It's in bread and pasta and crackers and a lot of other things. Ilsa grabbed the loaf of bread. Then what's this? Gluten-free bread. It looks like cardboard. As they reached the dairy case, Ilsa spotted the new holiday display. Yes, they've got eggnog. She reached for a carton, but mom shook her head. Eggnog has dairy in it, hun. You can't have milk. Let's try this instead. Mom picked up a small carton and handed it to Ilsa. Soy nog? By the time they got home to unload groceries, Ilsa was miserable. You've gotta be kidding. What about Sunday dinners? What about Aunt Ellen's stuffing and Grandma's rolls and pie and all the good stuff? We'll find options for you, I promise. Ilsa reached for her plastic pumpkin full of candy on the counter. She grabbed a mini candy bar, and then stopped, a sinking feeling in her stomach. I can't eat any of this now, can I? I'm sorry, hun. When Ilsa opened her lunch bag at school the next day, she tried not to groan. A sun butter sandwich with gluten-free bread, a bunch of grapes, a few carrots, and some weird looking oatmeal cookies. Where's my string cheese? Oh, right. Ilsa couldn't bring herself to finish lunch, her stomach still felt empty as she settled back into her seat at social studies, where their teacher, Mr. Mendel, dimmed the lights for a slideshow. One of the best ways to learn about other cultures is through something we all do every day. Any ideas what that might be? Like what we wear? <laughs> Actually, I'm talking about something we do at least three times a day. Ilsa raised her hand. Eat. We all eat. Bingo! A famous photographer took photos of families all across the world, along with the food that they eat in one week. I want you to pay attention to the details. This first family lives in Great Britain. The first photograph included a family from the United Kingdom. The overflowing table of food included cookies and pizza. Mmm, pizza. Here's a family in Southern Italy. The next image showed a family with three small children. The loaves of bread on the counter looked so fresh, Ilsa could practically smell the scent of baking bread. Ooh. This is Germany. 
The next image showed another table top loaded with food, but Ilsa could only focus on the container full of ice cream front and center. Yet another thing she could no longer eat. Her stomach rumbled. Here's a family in Bhutan. It's a small country beside India. The next photo showed 12 people with a colorful display of vegetables, a large bag of rice, and a small amount of meat. Ilsa frowned. That's all they eat? It's what they have to work with. This next photograph is from the country of Chad in Central Africa. A family of six sat on the ground. In front of them, a tiny bag of grains, a small amount of beans, and a handful of vegetables. Wait, where's the rest of their food? That's it. For a whole week? Ilsa shook her head. That's just... Ilsa? What are you thinking? I guess I knew that some people don't have the same things to eat that we do, or as much. It's just different seeing it. The colorful photos haunted Ilsa for the rest of the afternoon. She was quiet as she took off her backpack in the kitchen at home. You want a snack, hon? I've got some trail mix. I'm good. Ilsa pulled her lunch bag out of her backpack and opened it up. How was the gluten-free bread? It was okay, actually. I'm going to finish my sandwich now. Ilsa took a bite of her sandwich and chewed. It wasn't like regular bread, but she could get used to it. What's that thing Grandma always says before dinner? What thing? I don't, before the prayer. It's the verse, like say thank you, whatever happens. Oh, um, it's from Thessalonians, I think. Mom checked her Bible app. Give thanks no matter what happens. God wants you to thank him because you believe in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that. Ilsa smiled and took a bite out of one of the oatmeal cookies. Hey, these are really good. Thanks for making stuff I can eat. Ilsa knew it would take some time to adjust her new eating plan, but she was glad for the reminder that she still had a lot to be thankful for.
In the story, Ilsa had to change everything that she ate. And originally, she thought it was all gross. She didn't know what it was. She didn't like what it was. She just wanted the food that she was used to. And until she changed the way she looked at the food she had, she changed her perspective, she didn't see that she had a lot to be grateful for. The bottom line is to give thanks no matter what, even in the bad, and especially when things don't go the way they planned or they aren't what you were expecting, because you will always have something to be grateful for.